You're listening to Make It Big, a podcast about all things e-commerce, created by Big Commerce. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Make It Big podcast. My name is Haley Adams, and I am the Senior Partner Enablement Manager here at Big Commerce. On today's episode, we'll be diving into some of the latest e-commerce payment trends, most notably, buy now, pay later. Joining us today to share some expert insights is Paul Paradis, president of alternative payments platform, Sezzle. Paul, we are thrilled to have you on the show today to talk payment trends with us. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me, Haley. I'm excited to be here and you know, really looking forward to sharing more about Sezzle and buy now, pay later more broadly. Thank you. Awesome. So before we get started, I want to give listeners a little insight into the e-commerce payment landscape and where it is right now. For decades, we saw cash, check, and card transactions dominating consumer and business payments. But as e-commerce came into the scene and accelerated during the pandemic, the industry saw trends of contactless installments and channelless payment methods. From the rise of digital wallets such as PayPal and Apple Pay to cryptocurrency payments like Bitcoin, it is so evident that shoppers are seeking a truly frictionless buying experience. In fact, according to Statista, the total transaction value and the digital payment segment is projected to reach $8.56 trillion in 2022, which goes to show that these trends are not slowing down anytime soon. But one digital payment trend that I like to focus on today is Buy Now, Pay Later, a point-of-sale financing solution that allows customers to pay in installments rather than paying the entire cost up front. According to eMarketer, Buy Now, Pay Later users will grow by double digits in the coming years to account for 34% of digital buyers by 2025. And as BigCommerce's preferred Buy Now, Pay Later solution, Sezzle is leading the pack and helping to make the customer buying journey as seamless as possible. Today, Paul is going to tell us about the latest payment trends that Sezzle has been seeing on their end, and then dive into some general trends in e-commerce. All right, first, for those who aren't familiar with Sezzle, Tell us a little bit more about the platform, how it got started, and how it's helping improve the digital buyer journey. Sure. So at Sezzle, you know, we launched the first pay and for solution in North America back in 2017 and scaled very quickly with small online merchants. The company was started by our CEO, Charlie, and me. We went to business school together. And this was actually his second payment startup that he founded. He founded a company called Passport which was a payments company in the transportation space. So if you've ever parked on street in a big city and paid via mobile app, chances are it's probably powered by Passport. But we saw that there was a need for a new type of credit. Credit was really being restricted for a lot of people through the CARD Act of 2009. So we wanted to bring a more financially responsible, easily accessible form of credit to market. So now we're live with you know the most merchant partners in North America at well over 40,000 merchant partners. Uh, we've also been moving up market, working with enterprise retailers like Target, Bass Pro Shops, Shop.com, Wakefern, grocery stores. And we've added longer term, more flexible financing options for bigger purchases on installments. We, we improved the digital buying journey because we offer an easy to use, you know, like I said, financially responsible way to get credit right at point of sale. Access to credits decreased over the past 10 plus years, especially for young new to credit consumers. And there's a lot of people that are just fearful of traditional credit cards due to how quickly you can spin up a bunch of debt and then get your credit score into trouble. And so installment plans are easy for people to understand and we've combined this new form of credit with fast and seamless checkout technology to improve conversion for our merchant partners. So it really is a, a win-win for everybody. Oh, that's, that's awesome to hear too. And I, and I know coming from you know, growing up in, in America, right? Like credit cards and your credit score is such a big thing, right? And you're like, oh, how do I get started? I mean, they don't know me. Do I, do I need to like attach to my parents' credit card or something, right? So it, it's like this big unknown that then makes it really scary too. Um, so I, I love that you guys were able to find this solution and, and find this market and offer something so so that someone can actually purchase uh, purchase an item without having to have that credit score that's been completely built out. Yeah. And you know when I was going to college, you'd have 
credit card companies with tables set up on the quad and they'd be, you know, giving away free t-shirts and other gifts for applying for credit cards. Well, that's all now illegal. I think you also have just the move to digital with young consumers. They're not going into bank branches anymore. And so, like you said, I think it is really confusing for a lot of young consumers to figure out where to start, right? And for a lot of those consumers, where they start is when they're shopping online, which is a natural behavior for them. They're used to doing that. And so they see this financing option that helps them spread their purchase over time, right when they're about to buy you know, a dress for going out or some health products, whatever it is. And that's their first entry point into credit. So we really do view ourselves as kind of a credit training wheels, if you will. I love that. <laughs> credit trading reels, coined the term there. <laughs> Over the last couple of years, we've been seeing trends like digital wallets and contactless payments. Of course, find out pay later. What particular payment methods stand out to you, Paul, in, in 2022? And, and what other payment trends do you see popping up in the near future? I, I do think BNPL providers like Sezzle are going to be very interesting to watch because you know, we're all diversifying away from only offering installments to offering other more traditional payment and financial services, but doing it in a new digital way. So, you know, we at Sezzle are adding, you know, both pay in full and longer term financing options to our checkout to add more flexibility in case a pay in for option just doesn't make sense for that purchase. You know, we're launching a credit card that can be used anywhere with installment functionality built in. So we don't have to be a payment button at checkout. You can just use our credit card and then through our app, choose how you want to pay post-purchase. That's going to be launching very soon. So we're, we're combining BNPL with other and more traditional payment features to make an overall better experience for consumers. I think bank-to-bank -bank payments are going to be really interesting to watch. You know, the credit card networks have been so dominant here in the U.S., and, and they've made payment acceptance very expensive because there's a lot of middlemen involved within the credit card networks that are each taking a little cut out of every transaction. And so companies have been trying to crack bank to bank payments for a long time because it's so much cheaper than credit card payments. There's a lot of countries in the world that have already seen bank to bank payments explode like Germany, India, Brazil are newer to bank to bank payments, but it's really starting to take off. And for that to succeed in the US, I think you'll probably need the government to step in to play some part around regulating and allowing for another you know, type of credit rail to pop up in addition to credit card networks. And we also need to improve the speed and the security of, of bank to bank payments because those are two really big stumbling blocks with that type of payment form today. And then finally, I believe digital wallets and aggregators are going to be really important over the next few years. You know, most people love not having to type their payment credentials in for every checkout. And so companies like Google, Microsoft, Apple are going to make it much easier to store your preferred payment methods in wallets or in your browser. And that'll gain more influence over what your preferred payment method is, depending on what those aggregators accept you to upload as your preferred payment method. That's really interesting. And I know I love that you say bank to bank too, because I've talked a lot with our European team and, and done research there and heard the same thing in Germany. It's like, no, we all pay, you know, bank to bank. That's what that's what our expectation is whenever we're buying online. It's safe, it's it's secure. We we trust that method. Um so Interesting. I'll see if that gets adoption here in the United States. That, that would be great to you know, get rid of the fees. So we always love to hear that. But there's definitely, a, it's not easy to shift trends in how people pay. But I think buy now, pay later. I mean, that has gained a lot of traction here. And that really is changing the trend in America as well. Well, I was going to add on bank to bank, you know, if you, if you compare the costs, you're literally talking about a couple pennies to send a bank transfer relative to, you know, two, three percent plus for a credit card transaction. And, you know, people are actually using bank to bank payments far more than they think in their day to day lives. But it, it's really only used in the U.S. for like bill payments, those recurring payments that come out for utilities or rent. And so the trick is, how do you bring that to an e-commerce experience that's not recurring, that, you know, you're, you're making a transaction at that point of sale how do you capture those bank credentials effectively and securely? So that's what still needs to be solved for. 
Yes. I, I could I could only imagine I know whenever my bank details are asked for, I'm like, do I trust this website? Yeah. Is this yeah. gonna be secure? <laughs> so so I totally get that. <laughs> Question to ask. It is. Yes. <laughs> um so you know, co- coming from buy now, pay later, right? What, what makes this really stand out? I, I know I have my own opinions of, of why I think it's really attractive, but I would love to hear from you as our expert on what makes this trend really attractive to uh, to online buyers. So I think first of all, it's it's really easy to understand. You know, instead of a revolving line of credit that can be really confusing, you know exactly how much to pay and when it's due for a BNPL service, you know, when you have a a credit card with a revolving line of credit, they're really just trying to get you to pay the minimum because they make their money when you spread that payment over time and then charge you interest, right? So they actually make it hard to understand how much to pay and when. Whereas BNPL is the opposite for the most part. Most of us make the majority of our revenue on the merchant fee side. And so when people don't pay us back on time, it actually hurts our profitability. So our our incentives are aligned with the consumer. We want you to pay on time. We don't want you to spiral up a bunch of debt and get into trouble, right? I think it's less restrictive than traditional forms of credit. You know, we approve upwards of 80% of orders that consumers try to place with our platform. Most credit cards have approval rates closer to 30, 40% to get into a credit card, right? So we're increasing credit access significantly And then it's really easy to use. You know, if you've ever gone into a store and applied for a store credit card or gone to a bank branch and applied for a credit card, it's a painful process, right? You have to fill out a long form. The issuing bank will run a credit check that will take a long time. Your credit score will get dinged and then you might be approved, right? Whereas BNPL is a super short form online. There's typically no credit check involved whatsoever. And you get an approval decision in a couple of seconds with a much higher likelihood of getting a yes. So I think those are the big reasons why it's been so appealing to consumers. That's great. So making credit easy and accessible for people, right? And not not having the fear of filling out this long form and managing, okay, now I have a card for each store that I'm buying at. And also just being able to uh, purchase items um, and, and not getting a fear of being rejected, which is which is wonderful. You touched on this earlier, Paul, um, but one of the biggest criticisms that I know I've heard coming in the e-commerce space for buy now, pay later, is that it can allow people to incur debt, especially because it makes credit more accessible. What would be your response to this? Yeah, so I think, you know, first of all, that's not the intention of any of the companies in our space for the reason I just laid out, which is that Most of us make the majority of our revenue on merchant fees, not consumer fees. And we actually lose money when people don't pay us back on time. And so we are not incentivized to give out more credit than someone can manage. You know, that's actually when we lose money. Whereas traditional credit companies, they make most of their money on interest or fees when people don't pay on time. That's not how our our business model works. So we're very careful in extending the amount of credit that we believe someone can handle. The primary issue, in my opinion, is that you now have several large BNPL providers like Sezzle that consumers are using, and we have no visibility into how much debt a consumer has with those other BNPL providers. So consumers can have multiple installment plans out with multiple providers and make multiple installment payments coming due, and they get too far over their skis, right? We're the only BNPL provider that is currently reporting repayment data to the credit bureaus. We launched that feature over a year ago so that consumers have the ability to build their credit score with Sezzle. But to my knowledge, no other provider is doing that yet. And so the rest of the industry needs to get with the program and share out the, their data around who's using their platforms and how, how their standing looks in terms of outstanding debt so that we all have a better understanding of how much debt there is that these consumers have spread out across all of BNPL. And so, you know, when we're doing soft credit checks or hard credit checks, Sezzle installment plans are currently the only BNPL plans that are being reported out and shared. And so I think to really solve the problem that I think is taking place sometimes of people getting too far over their skis with BNPL, we need the rest of the industry to take part and take responsibility and share that data so that we don't have people stacking up a bunch of BNPL debt on top of each other. That's really interesting. And I 
love that it's all about the philosophy, right? Like you guys are supporting the consumer. Now you're on the side of the consumer here uh, and you want to give them the appropriate limits that make sense, right? Where, I, I mean, having a credit card, I'll just say, oh, we're increasing your limit. We're increasing your limit. I'm like, I, I didn't even ask for that. And I, I don't need this incredibly high limit. There's no way I'm ever going to spend that much. Um, so I, I love that that you can definitely see that in Buy Now, Pay Later. And I love that Sazzle's doing that. Like we're looking at the consumer. We're trying to be responsible with like what is an appropriate limit for someone and that you're actually looking at the analytics and reporting on that too. And, and that's a good point. I actually didn't even think about uh, consumers using the different Buy Now, Pay Later solutions. Uh, maybe to, to get around like I'm going to use this here and then I'm going to going to use the limit here on, on this other uh, area. So so it's kind of getting themselves a little bit into trouble by stacking the solutions. Um, so love the recommendation for you know others to follow the charge of what y'all have done at Sezzle, uh, just to help consumers be more responsible with their spending habits. Exactly right. Exactly right. And I, and I do think if we all do that together, we actually have the opportunity to solve some of that unmanageable debt problem that exists more broadly because we have so many more data points to use in real time because you're paying us back, you know, in our case, every two weeks, a lot of, a lot of us are every two week collection. Each one of those collection points is another data point that tells us whether or not you can afford, you know, more credit or less credit. And so we're actually constantly tweaking someone's credit limit based on their repayment behavior every two weeks. Whereas, you know, a credit line, it takes so much longer for a credit card to, to gather that data and understand whether your credit limit should, should go up or down. And so I think we can actually be even more responsible just because of the, the data that we have access to and the real-time nature of our, our business model. Love that. Love using data to empower decisions and, and actions and especially real-time data. Uh, that's great about being an, an online you know, technology company. You have access to this data and you can make changes quickly uh, based on it. So we talked a little bit about kind of some global payment trends, right, with the bank to bank uh, transfers. Uh, and I've heard of, you know, people across the world, I've heard of, I think in Australia, it's pretty dominant. And also in Europe, um, I know Buy Now Pay Later is pretty dominant as well. Um, do you think that Buy Now Pay Later is going to grow globally and become, you know, truly widespread? And are there any obstacles in specific countries or regions that you think Buy Now Pay Later will need to overcome? Yeah, I think I think it's already happening, as you pointed out. I, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find, you know, a, a country of a certain size and development that doesn't already have at least, you know, one BNPL provider existing inside of it. You know, I think the current market conditions are going to slow it down. You know, we've seen tech in general get smashed over the last few months, unfortunately. So I think, you know, high growth tech companies are having to shift their focus away from growing at all cost to how do I become cash flow positive quickly, right? Because capital is becoming much more expensive. A lot of us that are in, you know, early stage or growth stage venture, you don't have visibility into when you're going to be able to fundraise next, you know, at a decent valuation. And so I think we're all going to probably slow down a little bit in our global growth aspirations, but it's already happening. You know, BNPL actually has existed in many other countries for a long time. I think the term BNPL didn't exist, but if you look at countries like Brazil, Israel, Turkey, you know, these are countries where installment payments have been commonplace for decades. They've been offered in different fashions, either through banks or through the merchants themselves offering them. We're bringing technological innovation to this old popular payment method. And I think that's where you know, the term BNPL has been coined and really took off. But no, I think there's no slowing it down outside of just you know some of us high growing tech companies being a little bit more methodical about our growth, but the consumer demand for installments is so strong that it's going to continue spreading, whether it's being offered by, you know, a tech company like Sezzle or a bank or, or someone else. Yeah, no, I, I think that that is, I definitely am seeing the trend whenever I'm talking to merchants and 
well, my, my consumers are asking for this. So uh, what solution do you recommend? Um, so I, I'm seeing the trend grow as well. Um, and it's nice to see, right? And, and this time that we're in right now, tech companies, we have to be smart about what we're investing in. And it sounds like Sezzle is being smart there. And, and y'all are really diversifying and providing options to consumers as well, right? Like with your app, with a card, truly online, all the options are available for, for your different consumer. That's right. So in e-commerce, I know big commerce, we're, we're focused on the entire shopping experience. Um, and, but I would love to hear from you specifically, what impacts do payments and checkout have on the larger user experience? I, I think it's massive, Haley. You know, when, when you look at card abandonment specifically, Unexpected shipping costs and price sensitivity, I believe, are the top two reasons that people don't complete a checkout. So as a merchant, you have to view the user experience as a funnel. You know, each stage they go further down the funnel and you need to prioritize where the majority of your consumers are falling out of the funnel and solve problems to plug that leak. Payments.com publishes a checkout conversion index every year. And the number of payment methods you accept is directly correlated to conversion increase, right? There does come a point where your returns diminish, but you don't want to lose a customer because you don't accept the form of payment that they like to use, right? That's, that's a really bad way to lose a customer. So as a merchant, I would just make sure that you offer at minimum all the most popular checkout options and, you know, find all the different ways people like to pay credit card, debit card, installments, you know, wallets, crypto, you know, whatever it is, be up to date on the trends of what payment methods are being used and make sure you're offering at least one flavor of all of them, right? And I would argue more than one, probably two, three or four. You don't want to turn your checkout into a NASCAR, but you also don't want to lose that customer if they like using Sezzle and it's not there or they like using PayPal and it's not there, right? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you too. And looking at conversion as well, I mean, so much is impacted at that checkout stage because someone's buying online, they're like, oh, I'm just adding this to my card. I like this. I like this. And then mm, I'm going to get to checkout. Do I really want to pay? Or there's been so many times where I've gone to checkout or I've heard this from other, other uh, consumers and they're like, I'm at checkout. And then uh, I don't have my card with me. Nah, right. I'm going to cancel out. Right. So like if, if you only have, I've said so many times, if you only accepted, you know, th this specific payment method now I would buy, cause I don't have to remember all of my details, but, but you know, so sorry, closing it out, offering all of the payment methods is incredibly important, especially right for merchants. If you're targeting the areas, you, you're targeting the buyers that you want, whether it's B2C or B2B, or you're going into a specific country, the payment methods are going to differ greatly. So have what is appropriate for your target audience and where you're looking to grow. Love that. No NASCAR approach, but be smart about it. <laughs> okay. So you've talked a little bit about, about the offerings of Sezzle and how you guys are unique. Um, but talk to me like I'm a merchant here, right? So what is the Sezzle difference? Or if I'm comparing you to other buy now, pay later solutions and other alternative payment platforms, what really is your unique differentiator? You know, I think it all starts with our mission as a company, which is financially empowering the next generation. So I think we try to go beyond just offering installments, offering the ability to finance a purchase over time and increasing sales. That's important. But... Going back to our credit building piece, that's really, really important to us, right? And I said earlier, the, the training wheels of credit, we, we really do view ourselves that way. It's like, what do, what do new to credit consumers need to feel comfortable with credit, to understand how credit works, to know how much to pay and when, and then also help them reach that next stage in their credit journey by helping them build their credit, right? So I think that's, that's what we really start everything with. We have the highest customer ratings in the industry and focus a great deal on customer service. So by adding Sezzle as a payment option, you know your customers are going to have a great experience, which impacts the overall customer experience, as we just talked about, that they have with your store. And so it's kind of this associative effect. If you have a great experience, great payment experience, it's then going to have a positive impact on how they view your store more generally. We also focus a great deal on merchant service. We've owned a lot of business from our competitors 
because their previous provider wasn't responsive to them, wasn't flexible when they asked for something, maybe a little bit customer out of the box, right? So that's an area that we emphasize a great deal. We also have a very loyal customer base. So if you compare our most loyal customers to our competitors, most loyal customers, our customers are transacting far more often with our platform. And a lot of that is through our marketplace where we're promoting our merchant partners. So we're giving our merchant partners a ton of visibility with our loyal customer base that loves using Sezzle and wants to determine where they shop because that merchant offers Sezzle. So I think those are probably the, the primary differentiators that we, that we lean on when being compared to others. And I think those are very important differentiators, especially when it comes to payments, right? Trust, being a trusted provider, how do you become trusted? It's because you have consistent customer support and positive reviews. Like there is no better stamp of approval for trust than getting top reviews from your customers. And then that is even proven further with loyalty. If they're loyal to your platform, they're continuously using Sezzle. I mean, what, what better network for even a merchant to go into, right? You said you have your marketplace. So just a way of like, oh, now, now it's another area that someone else can find out about my store. Now if I'm using Sezzle. I'm going to appear in their marketplace. And then you know, next time someone is looking for a new dress, maybe they'll see it in the marketplace and, and find my brand. So just another great opportunity for, for merchants to grow in this omnichannel world that we're living in. Totally. And I think that's actually one of the innovations that BNPL has brought to payments is that, to my knowledge, I think we're the first payment sector that has combined payments with marketing and promotion. So, you know, 20 to 30 percent of our payment volume is generated from our owned and operated marketing channels. Right. And so as a merchant, not only are we helping you convert more sales at the point of sale on your store, but we're actually driving you leads and conversions from our social media, from our app, from our online directory. And I think that more broadly goes to BMPL. It's something that we brought, we all brought to the retail industry. And I think if you ask any merchant that offers a BNPL provider, they'll back that up and say, yeah, we see a significant amount of our sales actually coming from our, our partner. Awesome. So on that really important note, merchants, please tune in, right? Payments, Sezzle, buy now, pay later is not just about taking the payment at the end of the transaction. They actually can also drive leads to you. So another growth opportunity, which I think is incredibly important. Thank you so much for all of these insights, Paul. I have learned a ton uh, just from you here. And um, thank you for sharing your insider perspective with all of us today. Are there any final thoughts that you'd love to leave our listeners with? Yeah. Uh, you know, first of all, thank you so much for having me. A real honor being able to join the show. You know, if you're a merchant and you haven't considered BNPL yet, you definitely need to. You know, the merchants that we work with typically see at least 10% of their order volume being processed through our gateway. And a large portion of that volume is incremental. So you shouldn't ignore this payment type. If you haven't looked at BNPL, definitely look at it. You know, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but there is a lot of negative press about PNPL and how we're getting cons consumers into debt trouble. But if you compare it to other credit options, I argue that we're the most consumer friendly type of credit out there. Most of the time we're completely free to use. And really the only recourse that we have if you don't pay us back is to prevent you from using our service again. We don't go hurt your credit score. We don't start racking up a bunch of APR and interest. So if you go and look at our online reviews and ratings, customers love us. If you'd like to learn more about Sezzle, please feel free to email me. Uh, you can email me at paul at sezzle.com. It's pretty simple. And I'll make sure the right person gets in touch with you at Sezzle. We'd love to help you convert more sales in a consumer friendly way. So Haley, thank you again for having me. And yeah, just thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, Paul. Thanks for listening to the Make It Big podcast. For even more e-commerce insights and advice, be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts and keep up with the latest episodes.